And I don't know how you felt about it, but I still remember the chills when I got, when I first watched it. I was mind blown. And then I watched it for a second time, like the same week. And I was still mind blown. And I was like, if I ever have this stupid idea to create a big industry creative event in Bulgaria and ask many guys to join, I would want the people who made their cane to be with us. And I almost want to cry right now because this has become reality. And uh, I want to uh, kind of welcome to our stage uh, Hervé Dupont and uh, Philippe Lorena. Uh, these guys are coming all the way from Paris, from the very heart of Fortiche Productions, the very studio who gave you Jinx, who gave your cane, and basically rewrite the modern history of animation. And we can all ask them, how the heck did you do it, guys? <laughs> Come on, guys, I want some really loud applause for these guys. Jump. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks a lot. The stage is yours, gentlemen. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us here in Sofia. We are really happy to be here. Really honored. So let's go. So I'm Hervé, I'm the managing director of Fortiche Production, former producer on Arkane season one, and on the Get Jinx music video 10 years ago. Yes, Jinx is turning 10 years old this year. And I'm here with Philippe, the CTO of Fortiche. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> so, what's Arkane? Arkane is a special, special project. It's made from a video games company and with a small boutique animation studio. It's an animation project, but it's not for kids or families. It's more for young adults and adults. It's also a series, but with a feature film quality expectations. And it is a special mix of fortish of 2D and CG on screen. So, to sum it up, it's jinxed. So, let's go with 10 things we learned the jinx way. First, I'm starting from the end, but creative moves, because it's creative birth, so we thought like jinx is a creative person, so, of course, there's a link. So, first of all, and now we can prove that creative moves business mountains. So these are the data from 2021 about Arkane. It was huge success. You, we have been working so hard and wishing that it would meet its audience. It was beyond expectations. It was huge. And so in 2021, uh, following Arkane, uh, Riot uh, shared their new org chart. And now you've got three mountains. In, in Riot Games, you've got the games, esports, and entertainment. So Arkan led to Riot doing an effort in creating an entertainment uh, division. So it's, it was unexpected. It was huge. We are really proud, and now we are pushing in this, in this effort with Riot. But before that, what's going on? In creative, we trust. So this is about Fortiche story. So Fortiche has been founded in 2009, and it has been founded by these three guys, and Pascal Charru, Jérôme Combe, and Arnaud Delors, which are creatives themselves, they are the directors of Fortiche. Pascal and Arnaud are credited co-directors of Arcane. And so their backstory is, Pascal is coming from uh, Gobelin Animation School in Paris, which is one of the most famous today, or best rated school in, in, in animation. And it was before founding Fortiche. He was very well known for being a, an excellent CG artist, a great art director in CG and things like that. 
Jérôme is coming from video games. He started his first, he started in video games and he has been on a video game back in 1995, which, which was called Heart of Darkness, and which was the first one with a cinematic in it. So he started to direct movies for video games, when video games were turning to, to cinematics and the cinema aspect of video games. And then he went to music videos, direct music videos. And Arnaud is coming from art school, and he has been a director in live action movies, or music videos and ad advertising. So the, the three of them have founded Fortiche as creative to, to be able to do the movie they wanted to do as creative. So in 2012, big um, step stone for Fortiche. On one side, Fortiche produced a Gorillaz music video, so which cast a, a light on the studio and helps it to be promoted worldwide. And on the other end, we produced La Gaviota, which is a small uh, music video for a French group called Limousine. And La Gaviota was the first, I would say, creative manifest of what Forti style is today. It's a mix of 2D and CG. And you have um, the staging of the music video is a reference from live action. And you could feel if you like Brian De Palma movies, you will, you will see Brian De Palma influence on the staging of La Gaviota. So it was the start of the actual Forti style as of today. So it was 10 years before the release of Arcane nearly. So these two videos helped Fortiche to be known, and the style popped into someone's eyes at Riot Games. La Gaviota really, really stand out when someone was looking for something to do fresh new cinematics for video games. It was Christian Linker, is, uh, and so with Christian we did Get Jinxed in 2013, and then the Warriors music video in 2014. The idea between, behind Get Jinx was to not promote a character through a, new, a usual video game cinematics that were, they were doing at the time, but through a music video and with a different style than most of cinematics that were done by the days. And it was a huge success for Riot, it was a huge success for Fortish as well. So it really gave a twist, it was a turning point for both companies. And Warriors came to confirm that the matching of the two companies were really working well. That's where, and now these are kinds of the data of where we are today with, the, with our YouTube videos. We have more than one billion views worldwide with only the three top first video and Get Jinx is not even in there. So coming from that, Christian came to Riot and say, hey, I have a crazy idea. Let's do a TV series with Fortiche. And one of the tagline of Riot is, it's crazy until it happens. So they looked at, at Christian, who had never been a showrunner before. They looked at Fortish, who, who was like a 40-something people studio at the time, and they were like, okay, it's crazy, but let's see what we can do. And so it was in 2015, Fortish did a first test of animation to like, uh, test Fortish being uh, able to direct uh, with storytelling, and in 2016 we started the pilot, which was delivered in 2017, and then we started the whole production in 2018. So it was like lots of checkpoints between us to make sure that we were going the right way and that we were scaling both as humans <laughs> and as a companies toward the right directions. So in creative we trust. And then production needs to be a creative job as well to be able to support this. So this was on my side of things. So these are templates taken on the internet. This is like an average TV series schedule. As you can see, it's a hard slope, like every line is an episode. And at each episode, every department needs to go to the other department, schlack, 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 deliver, 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 it's industrial. And then you've got feature film schedule. Sorry, it's a bit blurry, but you can see that each line is a different department, and you can see that departments are working 
more in parallel than in TV series. You take more time to do best quality. So we were in between. And we were adding to that, working with a video game company coming from tech who loves agile and iteration. So we had to also have that in mind. And all extra layers of culture and sensitivity. There was an Amer a US-based company, French company, different nationality among that, people coming from video games. At Fortiche, we had people coming from feature films, people coming from TV series mindset, and the same on the Riot side on the production team. So we all had to make that work. And that was a big part of the production uh, effort. So I can't go into all the details of what we did to make it work, but I would say that the first and most essential thing sorry, that we learned is first thing is to admit <laughs> all this culture and knowledge all this different culture around the table and around the project and understand where they're coming from, where they're heading to and how they want to get there. So you can have all your team working together. And I would say that it's a, something that works on every scale of project, of course. But on this one, it was a particular challenge. And, oops. And then that's on the tech. Fine. Thank you so much, Harvey. Um, yeah. Well, uh, I need to mention that Harvey is uh, following Arcane since the beginning, so his, his Arcane is at the core of Arcane. Um, but, yeah, of course, with a, such a long time production, uh, six years of production, uh, that's, that's a production I, I, I never run that long and, uh, before. And, uh, most of the time when I'm doing feature films, I'm mentioning that uh, feature film is a marathon and Arcane was a space mission. But um, most of the time I'm, when I'm talking with the tech team, I'm told them, I told them all the time, it's not rocket science, meaning that we, we don't have to over-engineer everything. It should be simple. But for a project like Arcane, it's uh, many things are set before the production start. Um, when you are at the production, uh, you are something like six years ago, and you are starting, you do your R&D, and uh, you are very prepared for the launch. But ending to the delivery, it's taking time, a lot of time. Uh, it's reminding me of something uh, that happened in 2014. Uh, that's the uh, Rosetta Stone, Rosetta, sorry, uh, mission. Uh, that uh, land on the Shuri uh, Comet, if you remember. And many people were surprised that uh, the picture was black and white. Uh, it's because it starts the uh, launch of the, uh, of the mission starts in 2004. So it took them 10 years to reach the comet. And at the time in 2004, the most robust technology, the most uh, high technology they got at the time was black and white camera that they'd be able to put in the, in the spaceship. So that's how we end up, the choice that you make in 2004, end up to make the pictures that you see in 2014. And it was such a case in Arcane, because it takes time and you can change the rocket part in space. And when the production starts, you have to assume the choice that you made really earlier. And like uh, I've mentioned before, uh, part of the, um, Part of the uh, uh, production that I'm going to detail uh, later after that was to prepare all the pipeline and be uh, ready to, to start to launch this uh, space mission. Um, another one that uh, someone from LEGO mentioned earlier, uh, and uh, he, st he stole my slide, that's, uh, that's iterate, iterate, iterate. And um, we got the chance to iterate, uh, to iterate over the shots, we got, in the six years, uh, time to do a lot of iteration. Uh, we got time also to iterate over the pipeline. That's something I'm going to detail after that. We have some time to iterate over the workflow, because the way that we craft shots uh, from Fortiche, earlier Fortiche, really changed a lot from what we are doing right now in season one, and of course season two. Um, iterate over the concept, the way that we were before, and before starting Arcane, before Arcane, changed a lot. And it will iterate over the tools also, because as you can see, as we'll see uh, later, we change tool uh, 
from the uh, um, R&D part to the part that deliver Arcane. So we iterate, we iterate a lot. And we got a chance. We got time to get a break. <laughs> uh, so if you uh, are not aware of the production schedule, um, uh, there is a wonderful documentation, uh, documentary that's called Bridging the Rift. Uh, that's found on YouTube. That's a five uh, episode. Uh, and it details a lot about the uh, production break that we got. Um, but we got a chance to iterate over the pipeline during this break. And uh, this is a timeline that I show you uh, more in detail after that. But uh, we got a chance between uh, the uh, delivering the pilot and at the end of the pilot and uh, starting the real production of Arcane. We got, in fact, a time to iterate over the pipeline that is the pipeline 1.5. And uh, that was something super uh, unexpected, in fact, uh, let's be honest. And uh, I, I like, uh, well, uh, thanks to Riot and Fortich that keep all the tech team uh, to be able to uh, keep them and rewrite parts of the pipeline. And um, we got time to uh, better try some tools that uh, um, on uh, KDA and, uh, and Rise. And it was something that, yeah, of course, not expected, but really powerful. And we were able to deliver some uh, KDA shots. Let's see some of KDA, but a version of KDA. Show that this song. Sorry, that, that's the wrong version. That's <laughs> sorry. Uh, um, so during the during the break, uh, we got the chance to uh, uh, better try some uh, some tool, like I said before, and uh, we test uh, uh, a retargeting of animation. And as you saw, uh, as you may, as you may notice, that's not the real KDA uh, actors, of course. That's our bosses, the founder of uh, of. Uh, Fortiche and Christian Linker, the uh, showrunner of Arcane, and uh, one of the developer, uh, William Lowe, uh, that got the uh, good uh, um, uh, humor to try the uh, character that you may have seen from Arcane, because there is, of course, the founder of uh, Fortiche, which are uh, in Arcane, and he, he tried his tool with the, uh, the founders and using the KDA animation to prove that his uh, animation retargeting worked pretty well. So that's the kind of stuff of uh, the time we got to try some tools to be able to be prepared for the real production of Arcane. Um, but it's not only about the tool, it's also about the people. And um, we got uh, at Fortish, uh, we really love to uh, ask the tool that's part of our cultures. And uh, one example I really love, it's uh, our usage of my painting. Uh, we use a lot, a lot of my painting. Uh, coming from a visual effects background for myself, that's something that most of the time you use only for background. But uh, as you may have noticed for Arcane, we go really into detail using my painting for a foreground, and we, go, we push the limits of the my painting and camera projection from, from this project. Um, another hack that we did, uh, it's uh, one of our former developers, Marion. Uh, she hack the uh, um, the way of delivering uh, plugins uh, to the floor. Uh, she got really hard time to be able to deploy plugins uh, to Photoshop. Uh, maybe for you people that may already uh, try to uh, do plugins for Photoshop, it's not that easy to uh, be able to provide them to all your user. And she do a hack and she use the internal system of Photoshop to publish on the marketplace uh, the plugins. 
So she used that to uh, make Fortish like something like its own marketplace. So artists right now are able to directly download from my internal marketplace the plugins instead of ready to try to brute force the system and try to deploy them directly to the floor. Um, also, boring tech is good tech. Um, Fortish pipeline is uh, not a high tech pipeline. Uh, it's really simple. We use mainly commercial software. Uh, we don't have that much R&D, in fact. Uh, we use production proof tech. Uh, for example, the data flow that we got is only based on Alembic and um, a couple of files that are coming into the file system. Um, we don't have color management very complex. We do something super simple. And uh, we, what I want to say is um, um, I'm really um, <laughs> into uh, keeping something sober and, uh, and low-tech most of the time. Don't over-engineer stuff. And uh, one of the uh, readings uh, <laughs> I read a couple of times, it's um, Boring Technology Club. Uh, uh, the, uh, the motto is how to be old for young people. <laughs> and uh, there is a, a little QR code uh, going to the website. So boring tech is good tech. The synthesis of that is the expectation uh, between the variety of the production. Um, Fortish in 2015 was only running 3ds Max, uh, Soft Image, and uh, After Effects. And uh, Fortish pipeline looked like that. <laughs> and all texture, if you are a 3ds Max user, all texture were directly in one folder. So every artist drop his own texture in one folder. So diffuse, def, 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 uh, that uh, diff something. And collision welcome. So it changed the uh, texture during the render. And I think that was a face from Jerome uh, at the time when we uh, realized that he had to deliver 6,000 shots of Arcane without any pipeline and these only simple tools. So um, that was the reality. And, uh, and back in the day, I remember uh, in 2016, the, the schedule was to do one year for the pilot and one year for deliver the whole rest of the episode. The reality was not that. <laughs> Um, so we had to create a pipeline coming from nothing. And uh, that was the Evolift that we did for the pilot and during the, uh, the, the time that, uh, just, that uh, Avery just mentioned before. And uh, we introduced a lot of software. Um, we introduced uh, Maya as our main uh, digital software, digital creative content. Um, we did a pipeline for animation that doesn't exist before um, Arcane. Uh, we switched to Guerrilla for the rendering assembly. We introduced CROD that doesn't exist. Um, and we still kept part of our ADN because we still keep soft image into the pipeline. And thanks so much to uh, Pascal who's still uh, modeling in uh, uh, characters using soft images. So we did a really, really heavy lift and we have to face the reality that we were not able to provide the 6,000 shots uh, for season one and to rewrite everything. That's the whole timeline of the project. Uh, as you see, that the heavy lift of uh, creating the pipeline was done in the, uh, during the pilot. We changed the pipeline V1 to a pipeline 1.5 with new uh, uh, tools that we have the chance to better try on Rise and KDA. And after that, we launched the space mission that delivered Arcane and joining that we still kept some artifact and some legacy on that on season two. So the choice you made in 2017 are the one that you have to support right now. Um, and by the way, we extend the studio into the site, but I'm gonna let Hervé tell you more into detail about that. Thank you. Thank you. So, Lesson nine is Europe is the new continent. Uh, yeah, indeed. So at some point in the production, uh, of course, our producers are on the table and everybody wants to keep the cost reasonable and make sure we will deliver on time. So the question has been raised about going to see abroad and get apps from vendors from outside. So we are this case in 2019 during the production of Arcane about going to external animation providers outside of Europe. And we had 
at the studio two of our best animation supervisors, Remy, who was going to get married in the Canary Islands and sat there and set up there, and Alexi, who was living in the south of France. So both of them came in and say, while you're making this test with animation providers uh, far from the studio, maybe not fitting exactly with our culture, more industrial, like maybe breaking the spirit of the project, we could open some studios where, we're go where we are living. And there may be opportunities for you uh, with that because you can have smaller team and it's not Paris and it's different setup. So eventually they won. <laughs> and so not to say we did some great tests with providers, but in the end, you know, there was something about creative and, you know, keep the creative spirit inside the studio and the team and the culture was truly important for, for a lot of people. They, they came to the, they came to the party to have a party together at Fortiche and splitting the job could have been a heartbreaker for some people. So thanks to them, we have been able to keep all the animations at Fortiche and we set up two subsidiary studios. So one is in Las Palmas in the Canary Islands and one is in Montpellier, which is south of France. So now with those two studios and Paris and remote workers, Fortiche is, has become a big company. So the challenge is Europe is a new continent, but we also keep everything in ours, so it's a challenge. So this was Fortiche when they set it up in 2009, and this is kind of Fortiche today. So it's kind of where we are right now, so with all these people. And this is the, the next challenge for us to continue to grow. We've been, we've managed until then and we'll manage, of course, but it's, this is also reflecting with all the opening of the subsidiaries, the challenge that we have as a company. And this is just for instance, the web party of season one. More than 500 people work on the season one, some for one week, some for six years. And today, as we're producing season two, we are about 400 people among studio, so. Where are you on the picture? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm near the football <laughs> thing. And uh, so that's, that's very different from us, and that's where we are with, when I was saying creative can move business mountain, and it moves company, and it's, we're all growing up right now. And while we've been growing up all these years, one of the main lessons I would say was, of course, don't follow bullet points. <laughs> and uh, it was a big question for us. Find your own recipes. You know, we, we've been struggling at some point during Arcane. Are we doing a TV series? Are we doing a feature? Are we working animation way? Are we going video games way? But in fact, we were just going our own way. And that's really important, whatever the project is. Um, when we had finished Arcane, I read a book totally unrelated with animation, and I found this sentence that I found very true is from Eri De Luca, an Italian writer in Impossible. Experience is not a catalog of ready-made reactions. On the contrary, it's about having faith in your sense of improvisation. That's totally, you know, we brought a lot of experience around the table to do Arcane on every side, creative, production, business, everything but we did something new out of it, and that is a big takeaway. So this, and of course, get jinxed. Thank you. We've been quite fast, so I think we have time for questions. Hey. Okay, I don't know about you, but I personally enjoyed very much to see what's going on under the hood. <laughs> Infamous Fortish Productions. Guys, uh, can I ask for the um, feedback? Uh, thank you. Shoot the questions. I'm going to deliver them. Oh my God, I have so many. You know, <laughs> you're never going to leave this country, you know that. We knew, that's why we went fast on the presentation. <laughs> I uh, hope it was understandable. Okay. I'll keep that one for the last one. <laughs> 
so uh, how much creative freedom did you have on the project? Is that important when creating such a massive production? Yeah, that's really important. And uh, so when we did, so as I was saying, like we did get jinxed 10 years ago with Christian Linke, who is a showrunner of Arcane. So basically, the link between Fortiche and Riot Games are creative people. So the backbone of all our relationship is creative and creative trust. Like we trust Christian with knowing by heart, uh, you know, the game, what he wants to tell, the characters he's telling stories about, and he trusting, uh, he's trusting us with how to stage game and to do the visual development around them. So it's really uh, about faith and trust. And uh, as I was saying, like we were not in a like usual TV series, they output a script. They were with writing the script, but they didn't just output them and we had to stage them. There was like long discussion around the script to find the best way to tell the story and convey the emotion. So it was really a hand-in-hand -hand creative development. So total freedom and Riot is also, it's part of Riot's culture that everybody can speak up. Uh, so everybody can skip, speak up his mind. So that uh, create, uh, all the, emulates all the creative. When you are on Riot, and uh, there is some sign that say, do the shit. Gone. Cool. Okay. <laughs> you guys are very okay, but I'm gonna keep it for the last this question, you know. <laughs> you you all know what I'm talking about. And you also know. <laughs> but um I'm under NDA, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm afraid that you're not gonna get the answer we were hoping for. So I got a good one from uh, Boyan here, Stoyanov. Thank you, Boyan. Uh, how many drinks does it take to get the creative team and the tech team on the same page? How many what? How many drinks uh, does it ah, take to drinks. get creative team and tech team on the same page? We, uh, I'm not going to disclose as much, but we are. We, we love to, to share some drinks at Fortish, uh, I, can say, I can say differently. And uh, we, got, we got a couple of whiskey drinkers at, uh, at Paris. For um, emergencies. The, well, the, not that much, in fact. Uh, not that much drinks. Uh, but, yeah. th there is something at uh, Amazon that said that uh, you, if you want to get a productive team, uh, your team should have to be, um, be able to work around two pizza. So that's the size of the right team. Um, I will say, if you go more than two drinks, it's too much. <laughs> That's no a, one's on the same page. <laughs> you're not creative, you're solving it, something else. <laughs> yeah, and you know there's something, because Forti started as a small company, so the, the three from Pascal, Arnaud and Jérôme, they were creative, but they had to do things on their own. So they understood technique. Yeah. Uh, tech as well. So even IT, like, you know, when I started at Forti, I was like, Philippe was a provider when we were doing Jinx, you know, he was providing yeah. the, the render farm. <laughs> and so we, 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 did a lot, we did a lot of tech things by our, our, on our own. So, we, you know, even if you scale, you understand like the stake and the daily life of people because you've been there in some part. And, uh, and also being at Fortiche, people understood that it was really, um, the creative was a very important. So I, I, tech, tech people are really, engaged with supporting creative. Yeah. Uh, no. You, you, you want to you wanna, mm -hmm. uh, I tell a story? There is a couple of stories. So I've been, I've been a vendor at for, for Fretish since, uh, since 2013, since Gagegins. And uh, there was two, two different stories I've got with that. I was uh, delivering Render Farm at the time. The first one was uh, Jérôme that asked me and uh, delivered Render Farm. And it was, um, yeah, it was in 2012. Uh, 12, 12, 13, 13 something 13, like that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not maybe getting jinx. And, um, and that was the first time I, I met him. And um, so he invited me to come to the basement to uh, install the Ronda farm. And uh, that's, that's, so that's, that was the basement under the tiny studio because we moved four times uh, the studio, well, maybe five times since the beginning of our dish. And uh, the basement, that, that was a true Parisian basement that you can see in any picture, that Parisian basement. So it's with this arc. And uh, it was muddy underground, and there was 
a bar table that uh, maybe the buses borrow from a local bar, local bar straight around, and the uh, external connection came from the uh, ventilation, from the air condition. And uh, so we plugged the render farm with uh, Jerome, and uh, he ran and did ever, maybe get I don't remember which project exactly. And uh, when I came back and, uh, and I reclaimed the render farm, I asked him, how was the uh, render farm running? Say, we well, it dries the basement perfectly. <laughs> that was for Tish at the time. <laughs> I've got another story about render farm into the, uh, mm. uh, the scening of, uh, of the uh, toilets, but that's for some other time. Right. I got to ask you, though, uh, are you thinking about uh, pipeline 2.5 or 3.0? And how do you feel about real down production? Does it have any place under the sun? So, yes, uh, we are working on the pipeline uh, 3 right now, uh, already, uh, so there is no 2.5. Um, we, uh, that's what I mentioned before, we accumulate too much legacy in the pipeline, since what I was saying, that because I, I, um, we're not going to talk that much about season 2, but what I can say is we kept the pipeline from season one and season two with the same software. We didn't change that much, in fact, uh, for a simple reason that's the overlap. We were starting uh, really quickly season two after season one. Well, kind of the same time, to be honest. Uh, so we got a lot of legacy that we were not able to change. So we want to break and we want to get rid of all this legacy for the pipeline number three um, that will open new uh, new way for for each shop in the future okay thank you and i kind of uh uh keep wondering if you had to do our game season one now with what you know with established pipeline how long would it have taken it's versus the six years that you already it's it's, <laughs> it's the time the creative requires for their freedom as well. It's not just production time. It's you know at some, it's it's about also creative okay. maturity and the time time it takes to to get to the level where everybody's happy with the job. Yeah, d definitely. That, and that's not easy to measure, of course. That's definitely even if you, if you, if the pipeline is to, it's in place and delivers the shots, and uh, and it, it proved to be able to deliver all the shots that we are got in season one and season two. Um, there is not only, you know, there is not only the pipes, there is also the creativity, the people's organization, um, all, all that came all around that. So it's not, not only about productivity or pipeline, so it is, this is the, the, whole, the whole system. So it will take long. <laughs> Uh, that one is not a, que not a question, but I'm going to read it anyway. So, season one, episode three is a creative masterpiece, part of human history. It should be taught in schools. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you want to write us love letters to Fortis, you can. And we, we share them with the teams, and they are always happy to have like, great feedbacks. It's always good. And we had so much, but it's, never, it's always good. So. Uh, Maya has this question, now that you're a different company, uh, how do you make sure all team members find the same passion as when they started? Mm. Great question. Wow. It's, it's, Thank one, you, it's, it's one of the challenges to, yes, to work on that and keep the flame, <laughs> that's part for logo, keep the flame living up and, um, it's, and finding the right balance because you know you have, uh, it's, it's about, as you say, creative and tech and our creative and tech and production. And now that we are a bigger company, we also have like structural departments like HR, accountants, financing, like that. And we have also generations, you know, different sometimes. So all in all, that's also um, part of how we are moving toward that. It's, we, I don't think there is a clear recipe as well. It's like we're trying to to take that into account as we move forward, making sure that um, passionate people don't get frustrated, but making sure that the, the, everybody else is getting on the board, on, on the boat of passion, I would say. Like, you know, I, I think passion needs to drive the, the, the work, and so how do you embark everybody with that? But it's, creative is so strong at Fortish that it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, 
it's, it's kind of easy, I would say, because people are really thrilled with the project we do. So that's good. And uh, yeah. Um, can't help but uh, wonder, like, at what point did you knew that you were onto something, that it's going to be big? Uh, when did you realize that what you're working on is, is going to be, uh, I don't know. Think about that. Uh, but um, in my case, really lately, uh, because I, I've so, um, I did test in 2016, and after that, I moved to another production. Um, and I saw the test of 2015 that Irvi mentioned that you can see on the uh, League of Legends YouTube uh, channel. And at this time, I was not really into it, to be honest. And when I joined back in 2001, and I saw the first images, I say to all the people who are asking this question, you're not prepared for that. So for me, it's when I joined really the company in 2000, really at the beginning of January, we were uh, working on the episode five, as I remember, and I saw some crazy shot, and I say to everyone, you're not prepared for that. Definitely not. Amazing, amazing. And you are a yeah, on my side, it's, it's a bit different because I, so I, I first worked at Fortish in years 2012 and 2013 and I, as a, produ as a produ producer and I, I love the guy, I love the style, I love the reference. I'm really like uh, aligned with their creative mind and references. So that's really the kind of movies I wanted to be part of as a producer. So I was always a big supporter of the of Fortish style, I would say. And... Uh, then I got to another company for two years to produce uh, another Netflix show, F is for Family, 2D series, uh, first two seasons, and Fortish and Riot called me back like, hey, do you want to come back? We're working on this thing. And when they pitched me the project, they, were, they, were, they have already started the pilot as a small team, and they, when they pitched me the project, I knew it was going to be big. <laughs> it took me three months to accept. <laughs> you know, I really thought about that a lot. I was like, guys, I've never done that before. Nobody does. I, I, I kind of knew that it was a never-seen-before project. But in the same time, everybody was like, yeah, we'll see. Like, you know, there was something very candid that I loved as well, so... The idea was also to new it, but keep it fresh and keep it candid. So not to be like uh, paralyzed, because you could be paralyzed by what we were doing. Like, you know, we, we grew from 100 employees to 350 during season one. We moved the studio twice. So, and, and you know, sometimes you have too much to do to have the time to realize, to realize what's going on. So. Your days are full packed. Yeah, there is a funny story about that. Emmanuel, one of his teammates, which is uh, leading the talent acquisition, um, uh, get really hard time to hire people because the project was secret. So she yeah. was taking time saying, I've got a really ambitious project, and everyone is ambitious with this project, of course. So she was, it was also really hard for it to hire people. But when she got the NDA signed, she was able to, uh, uh, to show a couple of frames, people were already signing in, <laughs> wishing for. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, everyone started to see the first images. That was, I think, that's, that's it. Cool. I, I have a question for Erwe here. Uh, it's kind of rare because uh, the founders of Fortish actually uh, are focusing on the directing, on the creative part, and you are leading the show. So the question is, what does, it, what does it feel like to be the boss of your boss? Ah, I'm not the, bo I'm not the boss of my boss. That's the trick. And, you know, it's like, that's why also it works so well with Between Riot and Fortish is because these, these are a lot of horizontal company, you know? So everybody joined to bring their talent where they can bring their talent, but it's not about giving orders to people. It's about finding solutions together. And my job is mainly to uh, do some real reality check sometimes. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I feel more that it's my job. Like, guys, that's great, but we have to deliver tomorrow. <laughs> you know, these kind of things. <laughs> so I'm not the boss. Um, okay, so unfortunately, we are heading to the end of it. Uh, and I'll have to ask it. <laughs> I mean, the crowd wants it. 
And so when when we will have it? We, <laughs> Come on. We can go from we can go from and deny this information. <laughs> <laughs> anything, give us anything to live about. <laughs> no, we can go from and deny this information. Okay, <laughs> at least it's going to be it's going to be crazier. Yeah, honestly everybody's working their ass off to do something yes. crazy like everybody's under pressure you know we've got like we say like we've got the second album pressure like you know no. when like a music band who did a huge hit on their first album and then we have to release the second album so but now that i'm not a producer I'm, I'm a bit more far i can tell you that whenever i see things from the season two i'm amazed and okay and let I'm me really i'm really amazed by the, the, let the me translate they're doing right now these french to you guys, <laughs> very soon, <laughs> and it's gonna be mind blowing. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. Dear gentlemen, thank you so much for being uh, with us uh, here today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you for you. sharing uh, your path. Uh, we are all looking forward to the bright future of what you're gonna bring to us. We're gonna devour it. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank, thank you. you, and thank Woo! you, everybody. Applause, everyone, for Fortis Productions. Thank you.